This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company. Hey, welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Kid's Mind. My name is Robert Lamb. And I'm Julie Douglas, and today we are talking about air pressure, something that you probably don't think much about, but the fact of the matter is, is that air actually has weight. And, it, and it's pressing in against us all the time. So we're gonna conduct an experiment here to show you just how powerful that pressure actually is. Uh, in order to carry this out, we're gonna need a few household items. We're gonna want to have an empty soda can with just a little bit of liquid water at the bottom. We also have a stove with some hot boiling water on top of it, and we also have a bowl that is filled with ice water. Now, we're wearing protective uh, gear here, and we recommend you do this as well. Uh, we have some gloves, we have some goggles, and we have some tongs to handle the soda can with. That's right. And you also want to have parental supervision if you're uh, handling the heat part of this, because this is going to get very hot. Yep, and now we have our can over here, which we are actually going to put right inside of this pot. But we should mention that right now the air pressure outside of the can matches the air pressure inside, and we are about to change those conditions. All right, that's very hot, and I'm going to put the can in here. And now what's going to happen is the heat inside this pot is going to heat up the water in the can, and that water is going to expand into water vapor, okay? It's going to press the air out of the can. And here in a moment, once it's heated up, we're going to move that can very quickly from the hot pot to the cold water. And we should mention too that this uh, heating up process is anywhere from about 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on your heat source. But a big clue that your can is ready is that you'll begin to see water vapor escaping from the lip of the can. When the can moves from the hot water to the cold water, that rapid change in temperature is going to cause that water vapor to condense and cause the outside pressure, which is greater than the inside pressure, to crush the can. All right, let's do this thing. And there we go. Wow, did you see that? The outside pressure was greater than the pressure inside the can. So that air pressure just crushed it. Yep, and even though aluminum is really sturdy, it just couldn't hold its form. Air pressure in action. When we observe the smashing of that can, we are seeing atmospheric pressure in action. It's something that's easy to take for granted because the air around us often appears just to be empty, but it's composed of particles and there are a lot of them. Yeah, and they weigh a lot. In fact, they weigh about 5.5 quadrillion tons. It's all held in place by gravity. At the lowest level, we have solid rock. And on top of that, we have a layer of ocean. And on top of that, we have the layer of atmosphere. We live in the atmosphere, the fish live in the sea, and uh, the fish would have a hard time living up here, we would have a hard time living down there. We depend on this atmospheric layer, and we can only live in a narrow layer of that atmosphere because we need the air pressure to, to be sufficient for life. A good example of this is if you were to scale, say, Mount Everest. If you got to the top, there would be a thinner layer of air pressure. And while that's okay, that's not necessarily a place that you could survive in for the rest of your life. So whether we're traveling to the deepest ocean depths or up into space or even the higher reaches of our own atmosphere, we need to carry with us a pocket of air that is pressurized to the appropriate level for human life. Atmospheric pressure is one of several factors that makes life possible here on Earth, but it also makes life impossible on other worlds, which leads directly into something called the Goldilocks theory. That's right. Think of our friend Goldilocks. She's searching for the perfect bed. One is too hard, one is too soft, and one is just right. So if you think of these beds as planets and us as Goldilocks, the Earth is our bed. If you were to travel to Mars, you would find that the uh, atmospheric pressure is far too light water would not be able to maintain a liquid form there. Travel to Venus and you would find that the atmospheric pressure is far too high. That's right, 92 times the amount that the Earth has, which would actually collapse us like a can. So when we observe an experiment like the collapsing can, we gain a little better insight into what atmospheric pressure is and how it works. It's something that's very easy to take for granted, at least until we leave the very narrow confines of our own atmospheric home. This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company.